It's a pleasure to welcome you today. My name is Reinhard Krauss and I serve as the executive director of the Academy for Judaic Christian and Islamic Studies in Southern California. For today's session, we will follow our customary format. First, the presentation by our speaker and then a time for questions. And I would ask you to please raise your hand icon for that. At the conclusion of today's lecture and before the Q&A, we will also have a special announcement. As our speaker for today, it is an honor to welcome Professor Dr. Johannes Lehnemann. Professor Lehnemann is the Emeritus Professor and Chair for Religious Education at the University of Erlangen Nuremberg in Germany. His main areas of research are world religions in education and religion and peace education. Professor Lehnemann has been a key leader and contributor of Religions for Peace, an international movement headquartered in New York. Dr. Lehnemann served as chair of the Peace Education Standing Commission of the World Religions for Peace, and he is a member of the Roundtable of Religions in Germany, and in addition, the founder of the Nuremberg Forums, which bring together theologians, religious scholars, educators, politicians, and cultural workers for education and cultural encounters. Among multiple international interreligious initiatives, he founded the Interdisciplinary Center for Islamic Religious Education, one of the first German training centers for Islamic religious education teachers. And he undertook a research project entitled The Representation of Christianity in School Books in Islamic Countries. Professor Lehnemann's outstanding contribution to peace and interreligious relations worldwide has been recognized with numerous national and international awards, among them the Bundesverdienstkreuz or Cross of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany, the Mohammed Nafi Shalevi Prize, the Hoffmann Science Prize for Intercultural Competence from the University of Vector and the Intra Project Prize for Complementarity of Religions in 2014. Professor Lehnemann, it is a great honor to welcome you to the Oxford Interfaith Forum today. And I understand that usually in Religions for Peace forums, you are announced in a special way and your daughter will give us the pleasure to do that. And then the floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Enrique, and also Heinrich, for your introduction and for your welcome. And I will give a hearty welcome to you all who are with me now at the Oxford Interface Forum. It's a pleasure and it's an honor for me. And I'm very happy that I see so many friends and colleagues who are working in the same way as I try to do. I will uh, present you today on the link between interreligious learning and peace education as a global challenge. No peace among nations and religions without interreligious learning and peace education. The endeavors of religions for peace. How did I come to this topic? It was in the 70s of the last century, exactly 50 years ago. I had completed my doctorate in New Testament studies on the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians and was a long lecturer at the University of Münster. Then students asked me, how can we represent the Christian faith in the face of the challenges posed by the world religions. When I moved to the teacher training academy at Lüneburg, I taught a seminar on non-Christian religions in religious education. 
focusing on Islam. We visited a mosque in Hamburg, which was quite unusual at that time. When I subsequently worked as sabbatical cover for a professor in Berlin, I quickly had to turn the seminar into a lecture. And in the years that follows, I wrote my second book, The German Habilitation, based on this. When the book came out in 1977, Islam had suddenly become the third largest denomination in Germany due to the migrant workers from Turkey. I was quickly appointed to a curriculum commission on Islamic religious education and to a church committee on living together with Muslims. You can see on the left a uh, first textbook we have brought out. It was in Turkish, but with uh, uh, German subtitles. And it was read in Egypt and in other countries as well. And uh, the booklet Zusammenleben mit Muslimen had an edition of 250,000 and was distributed to all policemen in Berlin, for example. <clears throat> when I took over the chair for religious education at the University of Erlangen Nuremberg in 1981, I received funding for a symposium on cultural encounters in school and studies. It was the beginning of the Nuremberg reforms, which since then took place every three years, often education for cultural encounters that became increasingly multicultural and international. In 1986, my two volume book, World Religions in Classes was published. In 1988, I secured Professor Hans Küng as keynote speaker for the third Nuremberg Forum on World Religions in Education, who had become one of the internationally leading critical Catholic voices. In his talk, he presented four theses, which became the basis for his global ethic project. Now, peace among the nations, without peace among the religions, no peace among the religions without dialogue between the religions, no dialogue between the religions without global ethical standards, no survival of our globe without a global ethic. I edit the fifth thesis, no peace among the religions without interreligious learning and peace education. In the same year, my activities for the World Conference on Religion for Peace, so he was the first name of Religion for Peace, which was used, um, began. I founded a local group in Nuremberg and attended the first, the first time a World Assembly in Melbourne, Australia, in early 1989. There I had to lead a working group on peace education in and with religions under the overall title, Building Peace Through Trust. In the years that followed, I assisted Hans Küng in formulating a declaration towards the global ethic. In 1993, this declaration was adopted at the so-called Second Par World Parliament of Religions, signed by 200 religious leaders, among them, for example, the Dalai Lama. During these years, people started to realize that the peace work of the regions not only needs conferences and concrete mediation in conflicts, but also continuous work in core areas, which also include peace education. The initiative, initiative was launched at the Sixth World Assembly of Regions for Peace in the Vatican in the presence of Pope John Paul II and continued in Riva del Garda. When Pope John II entered the room in his white clothes, he smiled because it was the hall of the Bishop's Synod. And he saw all the colored people there with their clothes also
Um, so I continue reading <clears throat> uh, uh, while my father gets back. Um, that would be wonderful. Yeah. During these years, the realization grew that the peace work of the religions not only needs conference and concrete mediation conflict, but also continuous work. The initiative was launched at the Sixth World Assembly of Religions for Peace, which was open in the Vatican and the princes of Pope John. Our motto was, since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed, preamble of the UNESCO Constitution. The duty of the Peace Education Standing Commission, much important work is already being carried out in the field of peace education. The PESC has taken upon itself the job of bringing this practical work closer together with the messages and forces of peace inherent in the various religious traditions. We document positive examples of interreligious and intercultural education, of violence-free communication and spiritual trainings. The work has mainly been done on three levels. At the Nuremberg Forums for Interreligious Inter Intercultural Education, through brochures with documentation and systematic presentation of interreligious and intercultural peace education projects, in commission work during world assemblies and European assemblies of religions for peace. To illustrate the work, I will give some examples. In 1999, the Seventh World Assembly of Religions for Peace was held in Amman, Jordan, opened by King Abdullah II and Prince Hassan, who is continuously working with peace initiatives in the Middle East. During a pre-conference on peace education, which we had at the Schneller School Amman, where children from poor families, Christian and Muslims together are trained. Among other projects, a book of Rabbi Bugot was presented with pictures of children showing their dreams and hopes of peace in three languages, Hebra uh, Hebrew, Arabic, and English. Shalom, Salam, peace. The specific educational contribution of the regions is twofold inward and outward, through an inner renewal of their spiritual resources and motivations, religions can show ways leading towards peace and reconciliation, and they can improve the sense of responsibility for social justice and the integrity of creation. Looking outward to the wider community, religions have to create an open atmosphere for real encounter and cooperation between different religious and also non-religious persons and organizations. They should devote care to obtaining and spreading an authentic understanding of the faith of the others and also articulating their own belief to members of other religions and worldviews in a respectful way and at the same time refusing all kinds of proselytizing. Lively interreligious contact and dialogue are increasingly essential not only for peace education, but for the religions themselves. During the first decades of the new millennium, a number of publications of the Peace Education Standing Commission have come out. First, Peace Education from Faith Traditions, 2001. Second, a soul for education projects for spiritual and ethical learning across religions. Third, presentation, preservation, development, reconciliation, religious education and global responsibility. Fourth, interreligious and values education in Europe, map and handbook. Fifth, media power and religions, the challenge facing intercultural dialogue and learning. The role of Interreligious education in overcoming fear and building trust, then human rights and religious education in educational context. And last, public theology, religious diversity, and interreligious learning. The titles clearly show the breadth of the topics we have worked on. Briefly, on the first publication. The United Nations had declared 2001 as year of the dialogue among civilizations, of the dialogue of cultures. 
In February of that year, they set a signal with a conference on peace education based on religions. I myself was able to bring in an initial assessment on the, of the Peace Education Standing Commission, <clears throat> which was entitled Peace Education from Faith Traditions. It contains basic insights and examples of interreligious education, education for nonviolent communication, and conflict solution, as well as for religious and environmental education. I took a photo of myself on the Empire State Building, where I see myself in the mirrors of the building. And in the background, you can see the twin towers um, of the World Trade Center, which were destroyed on September 11th by the terrorist flights through which they were brought down. This shows the whole ambivalence of this year which has only made our work more urgent. And we have to live with this ambivalence till today. Our next brochure has the title, A Soul for Education. It is taken from the motto of the movement, A Soul for Europe. We have explained our intention in the following way. Giving this report, the title, A Soul for Education, we take up insights of the 7th Nuremberg Forum 2000, Spirituality and Ethical Education, Heritage and Challenge of Religions. Education needs a soul, a conviction for humanity, rooted in the hearts of men as it can be found in spiritually inspired people. Spirituality and ethical education should be bound together. The religions have a special heritage in this field. Spiritual life and spiritual renewal are increasingly relevant to resist an, an ideology of purpose and success. Spiritually inspired ethical education is of importance to oppose egoism, violence, and the exploitation of our planet. The next World Assembly with lively work for peace education was the 8th World Assembly 2006 in Kyoto, Japan, with a general theme confronting violence and advancing shared security. Here you can see the whole family of all the religions, <coughs> the 900 people had gathered there. For the peace education workshop, there have been so many participants that we had to divide them to four groups three English-speaking groups, and one French-speaking, which you see here. I will call out just three passages from the Kyoto Declaration on Peace Education. <coughs> Religions have to develop proposals for actions in order to implement their potential for peace education. Being rooted in an ultimate concern, they can give the strength to work in the long, not only in the short term. And this should become a familiar part of all religious' educational endeavors. From their experience, they can be active in the prevention of conflicts in conflict resolution and post-conflict reconciliation work. And for this, educational work has to be explained. The next endeavor of our commission was concentrated on the European countries. We wanted to explore how religion is incorporated in public schooling in the different countries. We tried to show it on a map for 44 countries. The result is a differentiated picture. The color brown indicates that in these countries you have predominantly confessional teaching. The color yellow stands for a multi-confessional approach. Blue means that there is no religious education in schools. Stripes indicate religious education 
as a voluntary offer, or that there is a mixture of confessional and multi-religious approach. Since 2008, this has changed in many countries, but we have found in nearly all countries of Europe, there's a growing insight that religion should be part of public education to transmit the necessary knowledge about the cultural and religious heritage, to be orientated about the religiously rooted values and ethic for personal life, as well as for society, to reflect meaning and aims for life in the light of the scriptures, traditions, and spiritual practice of religions, to educate for tolerance and prevent wrong prejudices through authentic information about and if possible, encounter with the different living religions. A very difficult but fascinating research, which my colleagues Klaus Hock from Rostock University, Paul from Reis from Vienna University, and I carried out for more than 20 years was how Christianity is presented in countries with a predominant Islamic tradition. We investigated all textbooks, on the whole, more than 500, not only textbooks for religious education in Turkey, Iran, Egypt, Palestine, Jordan, Lebanon, and Syria. We had correspondence and talks with colleagues and educational institutions in all these countries. You can imagine that this has not been easy, but we found much more interest and willingness for exchange than we expected. One of the results is that the Nuremberg Forum 2010 be formulated in an international interreligious group of experts, standards for interreligious textbook research and development, which should be recognized generally, not only for Christian or Islamic orientated textbooks. We propose issues and tasks under nine headings. First, given an authentic, professionally sound portrayal of the religions. Second, developing a dialogical orientated interpretation of religion and belief. Third, portraying the religions and their importance in the lives of real people. Fourth, very difficult, how history is to be handled. Fifth, dealing with religion's cultural heritage and their contextuality. Six, the controversial issue of attitudes to the phenomenon of mission to religious freedom and tolerance. Seventh, mutual understanding in the field of ethics. Eighth, the life conditions of the students and their relevance for religious learning. And ninth, pedagogical and media didactics approach, which accept the students as independent partners in the learning process. These standards have been published not only in German, but also in English and also in Arabic. Our next big event was the ninth World Assembly of Religions for Peace in Vienna, Austria, in November 2013, which was held under the motto welcoming each other. In preparation of the peace education work at the assembly, I was asked by our general secretariat in New York to design a paper illustrating what welcoming each other would mean for interreligious encounter in education. The principal insights behind this paper have been when tensions between religious and ethnic groups escalate to violence, the lack of knowledge and of welcoming atmosphere combined with long lasting prejudices lead some groups to become fanatics. Education can break down ignorance and prejudices and in doing so counter animosities and enmities between different cultural and religious groups. We worked intensely with educators from all continents. It was possible for me to present some core results of the plenary for more than 900 delegates. 
I quote a passage of our final report. Welcoming the other through religious and multi-religious education. Being committed to non-violence and respect for life, to solidarity and a just economic order, to tolerance and to a life of truthfulness and to equal rights and partnership between men and women, according to the four irrevocable directives of the Declaration Towards the Global Ethic, these convictions are common in different religious traditions and still often wait for realization in the religious communities themselves. This means that religions have unique treasures to contribute to society that they could use in corporations with one another <clears throat> and with all people of goodwill, rather than viewing other religious communities and worldviews as enemies or competitors. The Thames World Assembly of Regions for Peace was the first to be held in Germany. In a time of growing tensions in different regions of the world, a time threatened by extremism, populism, the climate change, and the emergence of fake news. The World Assembly has been prepared by the General Secretariat of Regions for Peace New York in cooperation with the Department Peace Responsibility of Religions at the German Ministry for Foreign Affairs and the Foundation Ring for Peace in Lindau. Lindau is a city of the annual meetings of Nobi laureates at the Lake Constance. 900 delegates from 125 countries and seven different religions came together in the little town in South Germany from the 20th to the 23rd August 2019. The overall of this assembly was caring for our common future, advancing shared well-being. Next slide. You can see here the delegates assembled at the Ring for Peace, a piece of art which was the symbol of the conference. All things that live and exist are in relation and in a connection with each other. Andrew Moratinos, High Commissioner of the United Nations Organizations, Alliance of Civilizations, explained the motto. All faiths should acknowledge their interrelation and support the universal values of human dignity and the integrity of nature. The assembly worked in five commissions, a multi-religious vision of peace, preventing and transforming violent conflicts, promoting just and harmonious societies, advancing sustainable and integral human development, protecting the earth. The task of peace education has been treated in commission three under the subtitle Religious Values and Peace Education, a Practical Approach. The working group gathered with activists in the field of religious and interreligious education from 10 countries and different religious and educational contexts in America, North and South, Africa, Asia, and Europe against the backdrop of the experience that in many social, cultural, and religious contexts, the decline of values can be found as a source of conflict, intolerance, and misbehavior. Education, on the other hand, is one of the most important factors for breaking down ignorance and prejudices, which are the dangerous preconditions for violent conflict. Under the text, you can see uh, another text, a passage of the assembly, finally, final declaration, where it was underlined 
that we commit to preventing violent conflict by advancing peace education from early childhood to adult across all our religious communities, focusing on shared values, religious literacy, and narratives of peace. Yeah, so next. Our fundamental conviction was religions have each in a specific way the belief in the fundamental unity of mankind and of the interrelationship of all living and existing beings. The love, compassion, tolerance, ability to forgive, truthfulness, hope are values which cannot be imposed by law, but which are inherent in religious traditions and are necessary for all real well-being in society. <clears throat> they can be experienced and trained with young people in religious communities and in cooperation with public education in schools and in <clears throat> other educational areas. We have listed a number of practical examples of best practice, first from Europe, then also from other continents. Of course, this list is not complete. It just illustrates the wide range of areas in which interreligious speech education is carried on. First, international work in the European context. Interreligious educational work of the Global Ethics Foundation in Tübingen. The Berghof Foundation Institute for Peace Education working in Europe as well as in Africa. Then the interreligious textbook development the research project about which I explained the main standards. Then very important, uh, the RETCO, Religion Education, a contribution to dialogue or factor of conflict in transforming societies of European countries. Research in 10 European countries with many interviews with young people. But then initiatives also in other continents than Europe. I first name the very famous and important Edian Foundation, which works on interreligious understanding and solidarity through course cultural education, working, for example, with students of Israel, of Lebanon, of Poland, of Germany, and is situated in Beirut in Lebanon. And then the educational work of the Interreligious Coordinating Council in Israel in exchange with the Arab Educational Institute in Bethlehem. Another example is the Spirit in Education Movement in Thailand, founded by Sulak Sivaraksa. Family education in the communities of the Rishokosekai religion, a modern Buddhist religion in Japan, which supports uh, religions for peace very much. And at last example, the Latin American Interreligious Network of Peace Education, RELAP. After the World Assembly in Lindau, a plan for the work of Religions for Peace for the years 2020 until 2025 has been elaborated, in which strengthening interreligious education is one of the strategic goals. Establishing standing commissions corresponding the strategic goals, promote peace, just and inclusive societies, advance gender equality, nurture a sustainable environment, champion freedom of thought, conscience, and religion, strengthen interreligious education, foster multi religious collaboration and global partnership. Each of the goals advances Religions for Peace's multi-religious vision of peace, built on Religions for Peace's past work and align with one or more of the sustainable development goals which were brought out by the United Nations. In our commission, we work together with educational experts of different faiths and from different countries ranging from the Philippines over the Middle East, 
to Europe and North America. Each of our Zoom meetings is an adventure around the globe. You see here on the left, uh, <clears throat> Atta Karam, our uh, general secretary, who gave a wonderful address at the global uh, assembly of the Ecumenical Council of Churches in August last year in Germany. <clears throat> and she is doing a very, very uh, wonderful job. And uh, our commission is led by daughter Karen Leslie, Karen Her Hernandez, which is also the editor of our first publication. In the Zoom meetings, we have at first had asked for theological and spiritual which inspire and encourage us for the necessary learning processes. We have given our first publication the title, Faithful Peace, Why the Journey to Build Resilience is Multi-Regious. As a calm general secretary of our organization characterizes it as a bird's eye. The commission members share the rich and specific Sources of the religious communities, when asked what from their spiritual experience they can bring in for interreligious dialogue and learning. Professor Rambachan <coughs> expressed the intention we ask ourselves, why do we do what we do? Most of the articles combine it with reflecting actual challenges and showing concrete examples of interreligious cooperation. Of course, the book cannot cover the whole and complex field of the world's religions, but it marks a starting point, giving authentic insights of personalities living in different religious traditions with their specific context and their specific engagement. I think the headings of the introduction and articles speak for themselves. Forward, to serve together, is to live together in peace. The political and the theological, Hindu justifications for interreligious engagement. The church in dialogue, from Nostra Etate to Fratelli Tutti. Working multi-religiously for the common good, an Islamic perspective. Jesus opening limits, the relevance of the gospel for religious and interreligious learning. Indigenous spiritualities, theological and spiritual foundations of first people's engagement in interfaith cooperation. Interfaith experience and personal religious identity. Equality and compassion, reflections on foundational principles for multi-religious engagement from a Sikh Dharam perspective. For my sake, the world was created by Rabbi Burton Wisotsky. And uh, I finished with a picture which was taken at the Religion for Peace World Assembly in Kyoto, 2006. Children of different religions shake and lift their hands. Each of them came with a message I'm Shinto. My religion is a way to peace. I'm Christian. My religion is a way to peace. I'm Muslim. My religion is a way to peace. And I'm connected with brothers and sisters in other religions and worldviews on our common way to peace. On the left, there stands Dr. William Wendley, who has been Secretary General of Religions for Peace for 25 years. In the middle, is Mustafa Cherich, Reis El Ulama of Bosnia, the great reconciler after the war in former Yugoslavia. The message of the children is also my message, as teacher, as theologian, and as permanent learner. Thank you very much for listening to me. <clears throat> Thank you very much for this uh, thought-provoking lecture. Uh, I also particularly like 
the intergenerational handoff to deal uh, with our uh, technical difficulties between Professor Lehnemann and uh, his daughter. So thank you very much. I'm sure uh, we have many questions, but before we get to those in a minute, I would like to make a special announcement, as I mentioned in the introduction. It is my great pleasure to announce the establishment of the annual Lehnemann Interreligious Peacebuilding Education Lecture. <laughs> Wonderful. So although you were not aware of it, you have just had the pleasure to hear the first annual Lehnemann Interreligious Peacebuilding Education Lectures. Let me begin with the question. Um, you indicated that Religions for Peace works on a global level in many different countries, but you also indicated that you have a local group in Nuremberg, where you are, um, that deals with uh, regional and local interfaith connections. And I wonder uh, whether you could talk a little bit about the relationship on the different levels, global, national, very local, um, and their relative importance. Yes, um, one of the special characteristic of Religion for Peace is that it uh, always tries to combine these different levels. That means, for example, that in my monthly letters I am sending to uh, 240 friends of Regions for Peace in my city of Nuremberg, I always also inform about the international way. And uh, we always try also to bring them in contact with each other. Because uh, you see, uh, I say we have, especially on the regional and local level, the three steps of encounter, dialogue, and cooperation. And you see, uh, in the local groups, there is quite a mirror of what is worldwide going on. Each of the members of our Nuremberg group has brothers or sisters in other countries who in a minority situation are under pressure and in danger. And we try also to give some help just for, for these groups. So this is in that way interconnected. Thank you very much. As our session is drawing to a close, I would like to thank you again for a fascinating lecture. You have given us much food for thought and perhaps even more food and material for concrete action to reach out to our uh, fellow practitioners from other religions. Uh, so thank you very much. So very yes, much, uh, Tia and also Heinrich and also Enrique and also to all who have participated uh, in this hour. It was a pleasure for me to explain just uh, these items and I wish you all the best for the next time.